Hi and welcome to today's video. A while ago in the comments of one of my other videos, I was asked about this eBay printer that I bought. Um, because I've done some modifications to it. Um, I added some cork under the heater PCB for the bed and changed out the Y axis. So this video today is going to be the entire process of exactly how I modified that printer, what you need and how you do it. So it may be a bit of an epic, it may take, take a while to do this. Uh, I want to do it in one video, I'm not going to split it up. So without further ado, let's get started. So before you get started, I'm going to go through what you need. These M10 rods are recovered from the printer, but they need two M10 nuts and washers just up from the middle. You need to print all of these parts. I'll put a link in the description and I'll just turn that round so you can see there's a part there as well. You need some M8 threaded rod. I'll get a ruler and measure this for you. They are 210 millimeters ish. They'll be fine. You need four cut of that length. You need some cable ties and you need M8 nuts and M8 washers. You need these printed parts because the bearings for the X and Y axis get pressed in. This is the X axis belt tensioner. Take the ball out and you need a file because you need to file the holes a little bit longer or it all binds up if you don't. It's a bit of a pain, but you just got to do it. You need an M3 bolt. How long is that? 25 millimeters and you need two nuts and two flat washers you also need for the corners of the bed these are m3 by 30s i use lock nuts underneath you don't have to you can use wing nuts you need some super glue and some capped on tape this is a piece of two millimeter thick cork it's the same size as the pcb heater but we'll talk about the bed in a minute that's pretty much it for printed parts and consumables that you need to buy. This is the bed assembly. You need to print this part. Link will be in the description again. These four wooden pieces and the LM8 you use are recovered from the original. Basically, you need to drill the four holes in the corners to match the PCB heater. And then all of the other holes in this are from the original piece of wood. Just put the bit of wood on top and drill straight through. You'll also need two extra holes here for this printed part. These two holes are off the original wooden belt retainer from the original printer. They got drilled in when I put the original piece of wood on top, drilled through, and them two holes were left behind. This is a three millimeter thick aluminium and I got it off eBay and I got them to cut it to size. So the very first thing you need to do is to remove the entire Y axis from the original printer. That's simply taking the two bolts out of these two holes here from the back and the entire Y axis comes away. Don't forget to unplug the motor. And when you've unplugged the motor, this square in these two holes just take off all of the bolts from that and the entire original motor mount will just come away. This is the Y-axis belt tensioner we looked at before that you had to slot the holes in. So take the bearings and press them into those printed components and then just reassemble it as it was originally. But, you know, this is the world's longest screw so it takes a few seconds to screw this thing on why it's so long i have no idea i uh, but it just is you could probably chop the end off but that's fine and then you just need to make sure that the belt is seated correctly in the carriage whichever one you've got and then put some tension on it i mean i don't like to make it a guitar string i just give it a bit of a squeeze and until it, till it feels okay because if you over tighten it you'll pull the rods too close together and it's just not good Next, take the Y-axis bearings and press them into these printed parts. So you make one of them. And we'll build this part first. So we have two M8 rods. 
with an M8 nut and a flat washer and then the printed part with the recess facing you and then a flat washer and a nut. On the top rod we have a nut, a flat, the y-axis belt tensioner, a flat and a nut. To build the belt tensioner you're going to need another M3 by 25 or 30 and inside there is an M3 nut, it gets captured inside so you need a pair of tweezers or a pair of pliers to put that in there. It's a bit fiddly but you'll be okay. And then you have an M8 full nut, flat washer, printed part with a recess facing you, flat washer and a nut. The M2 nuts there on the belt tensioner can be left slack so you can slide it backwards and forwards. And that's that part. While we're messing about with the M8 stuff, we may as well make this end. So we'll turn it around so it's the same way. So again, we have a full nut and a washer and a printed part with a recess facing you and a flat washer and a full nut. But this time you need a full nut and washer on both rods and, and then you have to put the motor mount thing and then more washers and nuts. And then at that end, it's the same with a full nut, a washer, a printed part with the recess facing you, a washer and a nut. And if I turn it round, you can see exactly how the motor mount goes on because it goes on a specific way. You can get it upside down. And I always have the motor plug facing that way because when it's mounted into the printer, you need to put, plug it back in. To set this distance, it's a bit trial and error once it's assembled. Um, we'll get there when the bed's in and we'll do it then. So just, just leave all that slack for now. It's it's the same as it's the same as that distance. Just just leave all that slack. Basically, it's supposed to be lined up as best you can with the middle of the printer. So you can kind of give it a go. That has to be in line with the middle of the printer. Take a piece of two millimeter cork and cut it the same size as the PCB heater. I always cut the corners off so that you get better access to the fixing holes. Now, you can lay it quite flat, and it does end up looking quite nice. But we need to hold it in position, so we're going to use the super glue, and we're also going to use the cap on tape. So here we go. Take the super glue, and put a very small bead along the edge of the cork. We're going to do it one edge at a time. And then you stick the cap on tape to it. The cap on tape will not stick to the cork by itself. That's why you need the super glue. So I'll quickly just put a bit of super glue down there. We'll put the edge of the cap on tape into the super glue. You can see it captioned there. And then if we lift the entire thing up, it's a little fiddly. And then you fold the cap on tape over and stick it down. Do that all the way around. Now this edge, because it's split, I had to put a full strip of cap on tape with super glue just to reinforce it. Try and get the cap on tape on this side as flat as you can. It, it doesn't really make a difference, but it's, well, you want the glass to try and sit as flat as you can to the board. And if it's wrinkled, it won't. So here's the aluminium plate that we drilled and we've transferred the original pieces of wood and bearings and tie wraps, etc, etc, etc to it. We've bolted the... Um, the belt retainer to it and we've attached the belt. I didn't cut the belt at all, it's the original belt. I just literally put it on as close to the edge as I could and that length was absolutely fine. So what we do now is we're going to mount this to our PCB and as you can imagine we take our m 3 by 30s we put them in the back of the PCB. I always put the wire to the back so we take our springs, we drop our springs on and then I put a flat washer on the top because the holes are always a little raggy in the aluminium and then drop it on so that the belt is in line with the wire, put more flat washers on and then I'm using lock nuts but you can use wing nuts and just screw it all down. Make sure it's all not going to uh, move around or anything because the worst thing you can do is when you turn it over it all falls apart. So this bit, we're going to do everything from the front of the printer and we're going to install this motor assembly. It literally just goes in front of this piece of wood at the back and you line up the holes.
take your M10 threaded rod and on this end it makes sure it has a flattener nut, a nut and a flat, a flattener nut, a nut and a flat, a flattener nut. And then like the printer was originally assembled, just insert the end of the threaded rod through the printed part and then through the, the hole in the piece of wood. Make sure that you have a nut and a flat behind the bit of wood and a flattener nut in front of the piece of wood. And then you can wind them up so that they're a little bit closer to the piece of wood. Don't get them tight or touching or anything. Just leave it all slack and do exactly the same on the other side and then just quickly tighten it up. But make sure it's all slack. So this is about 15 millimeters or half inch ish sticking out the back and we just do a flat and a nut on both sides and at this point we can then take our spanner and we can tighten up just on that section only to capture the printed part against the piece of wood. That's all you're tightening up on this part. Now we're going to finish this build so a lot's going to happen quite quickly. If you plug in the motor because we don't want to forget to do that and then we take the bed assembly that we built, take our smooth rods and insert them into the bearings. It's just easy to do. They, they, uh, they go in quite nice. Just slide them in. Now in these plastic parts at the top, there's a C with a tie wrap over the top. So the smooth rod needs to go into that C. So there's some at the back so what we'll do is we'll lift the entire thing up and we'll slide them in and push as hard as you can to get the, the smooth rod to fully sit in the C right to the back. So if we put this washer back together and make sure we've got a nut and a washer, then we take this piece and make sure the recess is facing us. We can slide the M10 threaded rods through the holes on the printed parts and it's a little fiddly because you also need to engage the um, the smooth rods into the C's on the top of the printed parts. So as you can see, I'm fighting with it a little here. Uh, yeah, it is a bit fiddly. You probably need another couple of sets of hands to uh, get everything in. And if, like me, you've already put tie wraps on the top to uh, support the, the, the smooth rods, then you, you need something to kind of like ping the tie wrap over the top there you go i'll just use this spanner to ping the tie wraps on and then we'll just push everything down and that's it what i like to do is push as hard as you can so that you trap the the smooth rod right into the sea and now you just need a flat washer and an m10 nut on the front of both of them printed parts and you should be able to tighten them up If you rotate the smooth rod, it gives you a better idea, in my opinion, than making measurements of how to tighten these things up. So if there's the smooth rod, you can't rotate it. It means it's too tight. And if it just rotates freely, it means it's too, too loose. So just adjust the two M10 nuts and um, keep turning the smooth rods until you get it right. And then once you've got it right, take a spanner and just tighten everything up really nice. Like I say, at this point again, you're just capturing the printed parts and then give the bed a slide, make sure it runs nice and straight and smooth. So now that the bed's sliding, you can take the belt and you can put it on the motor pulley. And you might have to fish the belt out at the front um, so that you can pull it tight. And you'll be able to see now if the belt's running straight. Here it's running straight, but if it's not running straight and you can see it, you can adjust the M8 nuts either to the right or to the left to move the position of the motor to make sure the, the belt is running nice and straight. If you look down like the printer the, from the front, you can see it running straight, but it's a bit fiddly. It takes some time, um, but yeah, just straighten the belt. So once the belt's on the back of the motor and it's straight, press the Y axis bearings into those printed parts and assemble this belt tensioner uh, just unscrew that take your m3 by 25 
put a flat washer on it. I always like to put flat washers on things and then slide it through the side of the belt tensioner, through the middle of the bearing assembly, and then on the other side, put a flat washer. Now, what you can do is, after the flat washer goes on, you can use like a nylon inserted nut, but I just use two normal nuts and just hand tighten them together, because the trick with this is not to have it tight. It needs to freely rotate, but you don't want the nuts to fall off. So if you put two nuts on, it'll stop the nuts from falling off and just like I say just hand tighten them together and that's it and then you can see from the front side we can now move this assembly left and right to again straighten the belt so to me that looks quite straight so you move the M8s in you turn the tensioner to give the belt a bit of tension it doesn't need to be a guitar string like I said earlier but uh, you know just make it nice and nice tension and then once you're there and it's straight you can take your spanner and you can tighten these m8s up so that i just like to make it so that it, it doesn't rock up and down because if it rocks up and down it affects the, affects the print quality and things and then you can check it by sliding the bed forwards and back the belt should be nice and straight you should get full movement on it and that's it now finally everything should be tight apart from these now, if you lift the front, you can see it's slack and it's very wobbly. So what I like to do is twist it a bit and just make adjustments to it so that the printed parts are flat with the table here. It doesn't take very long to do. And then once you've done that, you can finger tighten these nuts, but we'll move the cameras to see. So now you can see we have a nut and a flat behind and in front of this piece of wood and what we need to do now is put a little bit of pressure on the bed and just snug up these nuts in front of and behind the piece of wood you don't want to be bending or moving the piece of wood at all the idea is just to clamp the piece of wood between these nuts and washers if you don't do this bit right you will push the printer out of square so be be careful be patient tighten them up slowly use an open-ended spanner give a little turn on one side a little turn on the other side and then just rinse and repeat until it's nice and tight on the piece of wood it does take some time and it is a little fiddly to get in and that is pretty much the complete modification process We've added these printed parts, these rods, the belt tension's pretty good, the bed slides quite nice. We've added this motor mount, all of those printed parts. Make sure you plug the motor in, don't forget. And if you look at the front and try and wobble it, you'll notice it doesn't wobble half as much as it used to. So that's what your printer should look like. Put the glass on level the bed and you should be good and that's it that's all you have to do it doesn't take a, a long time to do all those modifications it's more fiddly than anything else and the fact that you have to like completely take your printer apart and rebuild it so if it's working then you know you're going to make it not work and then hopefully make it work again uh, the entire cost of this was less than 20 pounds for the aluminium plate and all of the other bits and pieces that you saw used. So, it, it in my opinion, it's well worth it. Um, if you've got one of these printers, I would highly recommend doing this upgrade because it makes a lot of difference. So, as usual, please like, comment, and subscribe. I've been Steve. Thanks for listening.